I'm really excited to see this today. A lot of silver linings to the coronaphobia crisis from Thompson Reuters Foundation, news.trust.org by Gregory Scruggs. We get this, money talks, U.S. town prints own currency to boost coronavirus relief. This is, and I'm like, yeah, we've talked about this with Adam versus the man before with alternative currencies. We, we've talked about uh, mountain hours as the, the, the evolution of Ithaca hours. And, you know, there are a lot of possibilities with community-based currencies as a way for people to opt out of the dollar system. And is this the be-all, end-all monetary revolution? Maybe not, but this is a big chink in the armor for the Federal Reserve System and for fiat currencies all around the world. And especially right now, when government has created this state of emergency, we got to take care of each other. We got to print a ton of money. It's kind of hard for them to step in and try to enforce legal tender laws or other, you know, government monopoly money laws. And I don't mean monopoly money is in to say their money is like monopoly money, although it is, but that the laws that the government puts out about money essentially give the Federal Reserve a monopoly and the banking system through fractional reserve banking a, I guess it's technically an oligopoly, a, a corporate oligopoly rather than a monopoly. But in terms of the heart of the system, the Federal Reserve itself, Federal Reserve Bank, it is a monopoly on certain monetary privileges in this country, which is to say that it is a violation of your rights as an individual to create a monetary system more in line with your needs or just to even to have the freedom to choose among what other people would be providing without this unethical monopoly that is really behind the power of the US dollar and the fiat currency system. So residents of Tonino, Washington are eligible for up to $300 in the wooden banknotes each month to spend at local businesses. And I saw this right away, wooden banknotes. Okay, gotta figure out what that's all about. Tucked away under lock and key in a former railroad depot turned small town museum in the U.S. state of Washington, a wooden printing press cranked back to life to mint currency after nearly 90 dormant years. The end product, $25 wooden bills bearing the town's name to Nino with the words COVID relief superimposed on the image of a bat in the Latin phrase habemus autumn sub potestate. We have it under control, printed in cursive. I love it. I love it. With the coronavirus pandemic plunging the United States into a recession, decimating small businesses and causing job losses across the country, some local governments are looking for innovative ways to help residents weather the storm. For Tonino, the answer was the revival of the local currency that had bolstered the town's economy in 1931 in the wake of the Great Depression. As Mayor Wayne Fernier told the Thompson Reuters Foundation, it was kind of an epiphany. Why don't we do that again? It only made sense. Tonino, a town of less than 2,000 people, located about 60 miles southwest of Seattle, started printing the local banknotes in April, five weeks into Washington State's lockdown. So this is actually an old story. That is just now coming to light. Now, uh, you know, as as ter in terms of the story itself, yes, this is fresh. This is today, uh, Thursday, July 9th. But this has been going on for a while now. They saw this coming. And I got to hand it to them for not just anticipating, but for taking the initiative uh, on something that a lot of people are afraid to. You know, oh, it's money. It's You don't understand it. And, and you know what? This is all deliberate manipulation, of course. Uh, so that you can be financially exploited to make you a good little cog in the machine of the big monetary exploitation system. And the town of Tonino, less than 2,000 people said, no, no, we're not going to play that game. And, and, and this is such a beautiful example of local action, of localization, of a city saying, money's a problem? Well, uh, let's just fix that for ourselves at the local level. We, 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 you know, and, and a lot of people I, will, will criticize this. And a lot of libertarians, a lot of, you know, a lot of gold bugs and, and, and people like me who have read and the Fed by Ron Paul 
who have studied the Federal Reserve System, who understand the economics around monetary policy, it's it's really easy to criticize this. You know, and, and kind of like Chaz Chop, you know, it's really easy to, it's a bunch of lefties doing it. There's violence there. You know, they, they included private property in their, you know, independent autonomous zone. You know, okay, yeah, uh, problems, legitimate problems. But can we just celebrate people embracing freedom, asserting their autonomy and the city of Tonino, the town of Tonino, I think is, is making uh, themselves a great example of this kind of local action. Anyone with a documented loss of income as a result of the pandemic is eligible for up to $300 a month of the local currency. And you're right away, I want, I want to jump into the problems too. Well, what's the loss of income? What qualifies me as documenting that? If I if I write a note like Ron Swanson, here's my permit because I say I, I can do what I want. Because I said, well, I said that I have, you know, a loss of income as a result of the pandemic, then, you know, all right, give me $300 a month. Obviously, in, in a town of 2000, if you have someone who, you know, takes advantage of the system like that, people are going to know, you know, that it's, oh, it's that guy. There are going to be other consequences. And this is where just social accountability, reputation is, is, is a far better mechanism of dealing with bad actors at the small scale than even having better laws, better regulations, or a better monetary system. It's better to just to just be generous, be helpful, be a cooperative community. Hey, we we need to we need to help people in need. We want to figure out a way to do it that uh, you know compensates people for helping. Well, it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to help people. We're going to stimulate uh, economic activity in in our little ecosystem that has been harmed by being part of the bigger economic system where your rights aren't respected, where this currency is forced on you. And now we have a coin shortage. So businesses up and down the town's quaint main street, except the wooden oak for everything, except alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, and lottery tickets. Tonino's city government backs the local currency, which merchants can exchange for US dollars at city hall at a one-to-one -one rate. Susan Witt, executive director of the Schumacher Center for New Economics, a Massachusetts-based think tank, said alternative currency, currencies like Tonino's banknote are better than direct cash payments at boosting local economies. And part of that is because it's limited, obviously, to be spent in that city. Now, the, the interesting thing about this is you see already the, the mechanism of backing it up. It's, it's not just the community. It's the city government backing these notes and essentially making it like a coupon, right? You know, for US dollars, because they're they're still backing it with this bigger currency that has more stability, that has, uh, you know, a lot more uh, benefits of being a broadly accepted currency. You can't take these wooden banknotes and spend them outside of the town, uh, you know, since they're not usable for alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, and lottery tickets. It sounds like they, they, they function more like food stamps but they, when you say like, is this a currency or is this a, is this a is this a welfare coupon? You can debate this, right? And and again, a lot of a lot of people like me who are monetary policy geeks are going to go, well, it's it's not money because it doesn't meet the criteria of you know fungibility and transferability and divisibility. It's a it's a limited twenty five dollar banknote on wood. You can't do anything with that. Well, you can in the town where people respect this. You know what makes something money? Really, it's people using it as money. If I say that, you know, cardboard boxes are money and people here in Gardenia are willing to trade me stuff for cardboard boxes and trade them back and forth, we accept that as money. Well, then that's money for us in that limited function, that limited space. And instead of just issuing checks or uh, coupons or, or uh, you know, food stamps or things like that, They've actually created a currency. And now it says that, you know, they, they can re, re, they can redeem these. Merchants can exchange these for U.S. dollars if they if they want to at, at City Hall. But they don't have to. They could keep spending them. They could put them in circulation. And to me, that that's what makes this critically different from, uh, you know, a food stamp coupon uh, in the sense that if you're if you're a, a merchant. Right. You could go to City Hall. And, and exchange these for U.S. dollars. But 
if you could pay your employees with these banknotes, maybe at a little, you know, at, at a uh, boosted rate of something, you know, if you're making, you know, uh, $10 an hour, you and I owe you for two hours, instead of giving you $20 in, in USD, I'll give you $25 in wooden Tonino notes. Um, you know, I, and I'm like, wait, wait, what, what are they called? They, it was COVID relief. I guess, you know, these are special limited function bills, but it seems like the community has bought into this system. And the reason it's so empowering for them now, and this is a fiat currency, like really it's, it's not, it's not backed by anything more than the U S dollar than the government saying, yeah, we'll, we'll exchange it for this. I guess that's, that's more than the U S dollar being backed essentially by the violence of the U S government, right? If you don't pay your taxes in the U S dollar, the government comes and takes your stuff, uh, steals it. So you, you have this artificial demand for the U S dollar created by that coercive taxation, but what they're doing instead of just, uh, you know, working within that system by creating their unique banknote, even as limited as it is, they're saying, you know what, government, we don't respect your monopoly on money creation. We're just, you want to create value or claims to value out of thin air? You know, we can do that too. Now in a free market, would you have something like this in a community? I think you'd have something a lot better. Obviously you wouldn't have these problems that necessitate this in the first place. So I'm not saying like, oh yeah, this is the solution. This is what's going to get us to a free society. No, I'm not, I'm not that excited about this, but I am excited that Tonino's banknotes are showing that we don't have to respect the government's monopoly on money. And for the residents of Tonino who might have never considered, you know, what is money? How does it work? Or can we use something as an alternative? Is there is there some a new system that we could create? Yeah, there is. And this gets people thinking fundamentally about what is money? Why does the US dollar work the way it is? Why did Ron Paul say, well, gee, it's no coincidence that the cent century of central banking coincided with the century of total war? Yes, that allowing the government to have this money creation monopoly allows it to do all sorts of other evils. And I think it was Rockefeller, one of the old Rockefellers in, in talking about uh, you know, getting control of a central bank in the United States. He said, uh, allow me con to control the creation of a nation's money and I care not who makes its law. If you can control the monetary system of a country, that's more important than controlling the law. He says, I care not who makes the laws because then you can buy and sell the politician. You control something so much more fundamental than politics when you control money. And is this the people taking back control of, of the monetary system away from government because, you know, the town, the city government of Tonino is, is doing this little thing? No, no, not quite. But it is a good step in that right direction. Susan Witt, executive director of the Schumacher Center for a New Economics, a Massachusetts-based think tank, said alternative currencies like Tonino's banknote are better than direct cash payments at boosting local economies. And I, I think part of that is because they, they, they keep circulating within that limited economic space. Now, obviously, I want to see a more globally connected economic system. But when you exist within the dollar system and you create a little enclave of opting out, well, yeah, of course, it's going to help you. And, and that's a great thing. The city of Barcelona gave donations in 2017, 2018 to sports teams and cultural groups as well as social programs, then watch these donations go to big box stores, she said in emailed comments. So it created a local currency so that these discretionary funds in its budget would circle back to support locally owned businesses. Woven into our DNA, Mayor Fournier noted that for a long time Tonino residents, the wooden notes are nothing new. The tiny town founded around a sandstone quarry achieved national prominence in 1931 when civic leaders printed a wooden local currency to restore consumer confidence after the town's bank failed during the Great Depression. As Fernier said, this is woven into the DNA of the community. My great aunt Erlene has the family collection all stashed away. The mayor brought the idea of resurrecting the town's legacy project to the city council 
as a way to provide economic relief to businesses and residents suffering as a result of lockdown measures to spread the, the to slow the spread of COVID-19. Uh, now that's obviously that's not what it, what it's for. The lockdown measures are to what to control you to make you more easily exploitable. But uh, you you know it would be nice if the town also said, hey, you know what, we're not doing the corona. This is a corona free zone. We put up a sign. It says Corona is illegal here. And so it's going to be as effective as those gun-free zone signs. So we can just assume there's no Corona here. Just like in gun-free zones, we assume that there aren't any guns. And, you know, they could have just let the town open up. But, you know, that's not exactly what happened. The mayor brought the idea of resurrecting the town's legacy project to the city council as a way to provide economic relief. Uh, in April, councilors approved the pro proposal to issue up to $10,000 in local script. So far, 13 residents have successfully applied for the funds and some $2,500 worth of wooden bills have been issued, Fernier said, with donations upping the total funds available to $16,000. And that's so cool that, that people are just like, yeah, we'll donate. A new monetary system? Let's jumpstart it. And that is so cool that the people there have just jumped in and even as the city has pledged $10,000, private donations, 6000 on top of that. And, and this makes me more hopeful that this is a replicable exercise. That if a city government, and, and I hate to say that, uh, you know, it, it takes a city government, you couldn't, and, and maybe there's a better way, you know, and, and I'm sure a lot of the Bitcoin enthusiasts watching and crypto enthusiasts watching this show might be saying, oh, Adam, there's ways with crypto. We were doing this already. But there's something about, you know, the authority and, and a buy in. I, I, you know, I hate to admit it that a town represents even as a, a market force, as a city government that can give people more confidence in donating to a system like this. If the city government is backing it up and saying, yes, this is going to be respected, we're not going to shut it down, at least that gives people a little more confidence to participate in such a system. Fernier views the project as the kind of initiative towns and small cities must take upon themselves to survive the coronavirus outbreak amid what he views as an inadequate federal response. I mean, that just the term inadequate federal response. You know that guy that keeps us locked in the basement and beats and rapes us all the time? You know what? He's really not responding well enough to this situation. It's kind of inadequate. He's still raping and beating us, but it's it's just not solving the problem when it comes to the coronavirus. You know, I just, oh God, like that would be, to, to hear a, a mayor actually give that honest perspective would be a, would be refreshing. Uh, he pointed out that the federal paycheck protection... There, by the way, there's, a, there's. I'm sure if I had the time to, to think it out and write out, I'd find a more politically correct way without referencing raping and beating victims in a basement to make my point. But clearly expecting a positive response or an adequate response or one that's even intended to help people from the federal government, which exists to take advantage of you, just <laughs> you must be living in a marrow fantasy land. He pointed out that the federal paycheck protection, or maybe he, maybe to give him the benefit of that, maybe perhaps Mayor Fernier here is just being extra politically correct. He pointed out that the federal paycheck protection program, PPP, a fund of forgivable loans designed to keep businesses afloat through the pandemic is not scaled for the businesses in Canino that have just a handful of employees. As he said, quote, a federal program dumps money from the top in these blue chip companies steal it all if we do it from the ground up there's no ceiling it's a direct ballast to main street from the outset the unprecedented first come first serve program struggled struggled with technology and paperwork problems that led some businesses to miss out while some affluent firms got funds they did not necessarily need as jeremy field the regional administrator for the sba small business administration overseeing the program said from mom and pop shops on Main Street to local employers who are anchors in our community, we have seen the PPP save millions of jobs and keep small firms moving forward. Right. He noted in emailed comments that 86.5% of loans granted nationally were for less than $150,000 and that the program covered almost three quarters of the small business payroll in Washington state. Not some nice propaganda statistical manipulation nonsense. He, you know, he uses the figure 
86.5%. Remember, 86.5389421% of all statistics are total bullshit made up to manipulate you. And this case is no different. Right away, you, it, just, just a little statistical analysis. 86.5% of loans granted nationally were for less than $150,000. Okay, so maybe we put out tons, to, thousands of loans for $10,000. The question should be, what percent of the total amount loaned actually went to small businesses? And I would bet that makes things a little uglier for government when they, well, we did that, you know, because they could say, well, actually, we, you know, we gave 90, 99% of our loans went to small businesses. And, you know, they, all these businesses, they all got, they all got a dollar each. Yeah, we, 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 99% of our, our loans went to small businesses for a dollar, but the other 1% of the loans they went to, as Fernier calls them, the blue chip companies. And we gave them billions. Yeah. Oh yeah. We took care of our buddies. That's what government does. Hacking the system. Fernier said he has already filed fielded queries from towns across the country looking to emulate Tonino's effort. What if 5,000 other small cities that did that same thing and took it upon themselves to put $10,000 into Main Street, he asked. That's $50 million directly into small businesses. It totally hacks the system. Why would you have to hack the system? Oh, because the system's evil, right? So yeah, it needs to be hacked. So far, however, Tanino's currency does not appear to be circulating much among local businesses at the grocery and hardware store that anchors Main Street. Manager Chris Hamilton said that by mid-June, customers had spent 150 in the local bills to buy necessities like groceries and a new faucet to replace a broken tap. I'll redeem it for cash at City Hall. I hadn't thought about recirculating it. Now, that's too bad because yeah, that's, that's what really makes a difference. Next door, Don Juan's Mexican Kitchen owner, Juan Martinez Jr., has four of the wooden $25 notes sitting in his cash register. In a case of history repeating, he said coin collectors have offered to buy the bills for, from, for double their value in U.S. dollars. How cool is that already? Back in the 1930s, coin collectors fueled a speculative rise in the value of the town's wooden script, according to Washington State Online Encyclopedia. History link. Local control. The Schumacher Center for New Economics has documented more than 50 local alternative currencies globally that were active as of summer 2019. They range from the artfully designed Brixton Pound in London, England, to the Mumbuka, which bankrolls the basic income scheme in Marika, Brazil. The center also sponsors Berkshires, a local currency that has been circul circul circulating in the Berkshire region of Western Massachusetts for 14 years. Witt cautions that notes backed by U.S. dollars are only a halfway measure because the amount of local currency available is limited by the amount of federal dollars the town has on hand to exchange it with. A truly independent currency would allow for issuing currency as needed. That new money would circulate through the local economy and then eventually go to work paying property taxes over the course of several years. But for now, Witt said Tinino's project is an effective way to empower a community being brought to its knees by factors beyond its control. As she said, I don't believe the good people of Tonino meant for their wooden banknotes to serve as a robust local currency. They are instead making an important point. COVID and the lack of federal response to the crisis has motivated municipalities to explore what could be done with their own currencies. And that exploration is what is critical to seeing more Americans get away from the slavery, the exploitation, the ripoff of the U.S. dollar and the Federal Reserve System. My only real bigger critique that, that you know, aside from a little technical things about the, the Tenino notes is that they printed COVID on them and that kind of limits the lifespan. I wish they would have created something more permanent or enduring or something that they wouldn't say, oh, well, COVID's over, as if maybe that'll never happen. Uh, maybe that's what they're anticipating. But to have created, to, I would rather them say, motivated by Corona, we have decided to create an alternative currency that allows us to have some monetary functionality without the US dollar from now on. Rather than because of Corona, we've got this temporary you know, community aid program through a local currency, but hey, the long-term effects of this are still a beautiful thing to celebrate as just another silver lining from the coronavirus crisis. You didn't expect months ago that this would be pushing us a little bit closer to free market money.
and yet it is.